Less than 1 in 250 applicants got an offer for Netflix's software engineering internship last year. That means 99% of students never make it. I've been in that top 1% multiple times, and just last year, I received offers from Figma, Amazon, Slack, Gusto, Microsoft, and so many more. In this video, I'll be breaking down the specific advice that'll actually get you there. Hey, if you don't know who I am, my name is Mark Benley, and within 18 months of learning to code, I did six software engineering internships at companies like Figma, Netflix, NASA, and Tinder. And on this channel, my goal is to help you land your dream software engineering job. The first thing you need to do is recognize the unique position that you're in. If you're watching this, chances are that you're a current university student. And as a student, you have an infinite number of opportunities available to you. People are willing to take a chance on you. There are hundreds of clubs in various different niches that you're able to go join, like product management or artificial intelligence. There are nonprofit organizations dedicated to helping you succeed, like CodePath and ColorStack. And there are even programs out there designed specifically for you to get to explore new opportunities, like Google's Summer Institute of Code. And if all that wasn't enough, there are literally internships out there that pay you, train you, give you a fun three to six months, and forever boost your credibility through your resume. These kinds of things don't exist outside of the university scene. I know this firsthand because when I decided to switch my major from business to computer science, my brother and I were actually learning to code at the same exact time. The only difference was that I was a current university student and my brother had already graduated. From then on, we learned at pretty much the same rate and had the same sort of ability to code. But while I was getting my first few interviews at companies like Tinder, SpaceX, and Clever, there were no similar roles out there that my brother was even eligible to apply for, even though I knew that he could perform at essentially the same level as I do. Going through that experience has sort of forever ingrained in me how powerful it is to be a student. And understanding this is a crucial first step towards positioning yourself to be in the top 1%. The far majority will never realize the opportunity that's in front of them, and you can never seize an opportunity that you don't realize is there to begin with. The next thing you need to understand is the compounding effect of opportunity. You've probably heard the term compounding most likely in the context of compound interest, or you even have people like Albert Einstein who once famously said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. But the beautiful thing is that this power of compounding actually applies to opportunities. Every single opportunity you get compounds onto itself and makes it so the next one is of higher quality and easier for you to obtain. Everyone has an opportunity that is currently within reach. For example, if you're currently a university student, I bet there's some club out there on campus that you feel like tomorrow you could go join and become a member of. That is an opportunity within your reach. And the powerful thing is that as you start taking those opportunities, ones of higher caliber start to appear. Let's say you went ahead and joined that club on campus. You're now a member, and a few months later, club elections for the following year come up. You now have the opportunity to run for a leadership role, let's say secretary, that you otherwise wouldn't have had if you weren't a member. It also becomes easier to obtain those opportunities. Say you're now the secretary of the club, you won the election, and after a few months, the following year's elections take place. This time, you decide to run for president instead. Chances are, it'll be much easier for you to get that role as the current secretary rather than another student who just took the risk of joining the club. And I give this simple example to just really highlight how taking action really opens up more and more doors, but also makes it easier for those doors to open. And whether that's in terms of compensation, brand name, work-life balance, or whatever else deems a top company to you, the takeaway is that this is the fundamental framework to landing those top roles, which means that after you get your first internship, your second internship will be easier and likely of higher caliber, and so on with the third, and if you're wondering, how can I be so sure of this? It's because that's exactly what happened to me and for countless other computer science students that I know. My first internship was an unpaid opportunity at my school's newspaper building React websites for journalism. And while this concept of compounding opportunity does apply further on in your life and your career outside of the university scene, it's particularly powerful when you're a student for two reasons. One, there's so many opportunities out there that you're eligible for that it's far easier to start collecting them under your belt. Two, you get to go through each opportunity in a short period of time. Internships are 12 weeks long, and I've done six software engineering internships in 18 months. This means that I've had experiences at six different engineering organizations. And for contrast, if I was a full-time employee, the minimum amount of time that would take me to do, assuming an average tenure of say one to two years, would be six to 12 years to even experience six engineering organizations. And in all honesty, most people don't switch employers every one to two years, six times. But this is the exact sort of framework that helps people build the types of resumes that seem wildly impressive and sort of unattainable. 
Focus on the roles that in the short term don't seem the most glamorous, but you know deep down that this is sort of the path that's going to get you to whatever place you want to be. The next thing you should do is stop doing projects. I have never had a single coding project on my resume for any of the offers I've ever received. While projects are undeniably a great way to improve your skills, they are not the fastest path towards your career goals. Instead, you want to focus on finding as many experiences as you can. The average student does a project to boost their resume. The top 1% student finds an unpaid experience because they know that experiences are just projects with more credibility attached. And for those of you out there who are feeling like, but it's so much harder to find an experience, the missing piece of this puzzle is that if you treat experiences like projects, then you're doing your projects unpaid. And similarly, you should be okay with doing these experiences early on unpaid. And if anything, you should be more willing to do those ones because you're actually getting a higher ROI out of them. And why are experiences so much better than projects? Because you get to leverage the credibility that's already been established by whatever organization you choose to join. In my case, when I joined the Daily Bruin, which was my school's newspaper for my first unpaid internship, the Daily Bruin already has thousands of UCLA students checking out our website and reading our articles. And so all of a sudden, I get to have my work viewed by thousands of people. So if you're optimizing for the fastest path of career growth, then a rule of thumb that you should try to employ is that every line of code you write should ideally be for something that's going to go into the experience section of your resume. This can be campus clubs, local startups, just anyone who needs you to build a website for them, and so on. So the next thing that's really important is for you to understand that you're building a personal brand. Whether you like it or not, the truth is that we live in a highly digital age and people are humans and they're always building impressions of you. Even as you're watching this video, you're building an impression of me. So spend some time thinking about the impression that you're giving off. And not to stress you out even more, but the age old saying of you never get a chance at a second impression is pretty applicable here. The two most simple ways to do this are one, maintain an active LinkedIn profile that you're proud of, which means that you should spend the effort getting a nice profile picture, take the time to add in all of your experiences and have a headline that actually tells people about you, like computer science at UCLA. The second way to do this is to be on top of your email communication, which means also have a nice email profile picture, likely the same one as your LinkedIn, and also try to respond to emails in a timely manner. It's best if you can respond within a day or two or even the same day, and it's fine if things come up, don't beat yourself up over it, but email communication is the first impression you're giving with the company. And finally, you wanna go out there and you wanna study the top performing students. LinkedIn is by far the best way to do this. Find a student who you feel like is really accomplished on LinkedIn and dig into what their past experiences were like. See what communities they were a part of, what internships they did, where they worked, and sort of what was the path that got them there. I've been doing this technique ever since I switched into computer science, and it's literally how I found out about things like the Neo Scholars Program, which I was a finalist for, and the Kleiner Perkins Fellowship, which I am now a fellow of. And if you want to take it up a notch, it's always really cool to maybe reach out to some of those students and ask them for some of their time. You should expect that most of them won't be willing to kind of give a complete stranger their time, but many of them actually will. And there's truly no better way to learn something than to go to someone who's already done what you're trying to do and have them teach you. And if you want me to teach you some of the things that I've learned, then you should check out this video where I reveal my Trident framework for acing every behavioral interview you're ever invited to. I'll see you in the next one.